So, we're back here again at the same venue as the last few weeks. We're on a different lake today, not really by choice, but the other lake was full. So we're on this lake today, this is the top lake of the two. There's quite a bit of weed about, so I've had to have a really good plumb around and find a couple of areas. I'm going to target two areas of my peg today. One area at 13 metres where I'm going to try and catch some bigger fish, and another area at 5 or 6 metres where I'm going to try and catch some smaller fish. The idea being that I can rotate these two lines to keep the bites coming for the whole afternoon. I've not got long, I've got about two hours, so let's not waste any time and crack on with the fishing. Right, so first drop on the on the long line and we've latched into something. I'm not sure what it is, it's not very happy. But there's a bit of weed about, so I'm gonna have to um have to guide him around everything. Take his time. We've got a six as elastic in this top kit, a little bit a little bit stronger than I'd have liked, but I feel like I need it just to get the fish away from all of this weed. Looks like a nice skimmer. Nice start to the day. Little land size skimmer, about four ounce. As I said earlier, I've fed two areas of my peg today. One out here at 13 metres and one short at five or six metres. On this line I've just put one loose pot of ground bait with about 50 mil of bait in, 25 mil of casters and 25 mil of maggots and pinkies. And then on the short line I've put three balls in with quite a bit of bait, probably about 150 mil of bait, mainly casters with the odd pinky and the odd maggot again. I've done this to hopefully try and catch some big fish long and then plenty of small fish short. Catching the small fish short just makes everything a lot quicker and a lot more efficient than catching them long. So if I can get them feeding comfortably at five joints I'll be able to catch them twice as quick as I could at 13 metres. So that'd be nice if we can get them feeding there. I don't know if we will because it's cold but I feel like I'm putting the odds in my favour to catch a few fish if they are to rock up. My ground bait today is 50% bait tech fine lake dark and 50% brown lean. I've put the lean in just to create a bit of a cloud when the fish start to disturb it and hopefully attract more fish into the peg. I mix the ground bait really really wet again to make sure that it takes as much water as possible and it just makes your life easier when adding the lean to it afterwards. My rig today consists of the exact same float as my pole fishing video from a few weeks ago. It's a 0.4 reed float, and like I said before, you can't really get hold of them anymore, but they're absolutely brilliant. It's got a fibre tip, so it's ultra sensitive, and it's got a carbon stem. And if I can get away with a carbon stem, I do like one because it, it stops wrap around. And obviously, if you can reduce tangles, you can catch more fish, so I'm pretty happy with that. If the wing got up too much, I'd probably put something on with a wire stem, such as a Drennan AS7 or something like that, but I'm quite happy with this for the moment. Right, so after catching four or five decent fish on this line, a couple of skimmers and a couple of decent roach, it's gone quiet for a few minutes and we've just ducked into this much smaller fish. So I think it's time to, to make some changes. And that's, that's a tiny roach, about an ounce and a half. So I think it's time to make some changes. So I'm going to top up on this line, just with a little ball of ground bait, and then I'm going to get onto that short line and see if we've got some roach there. To top up, all I'm going to do is get a tiny little ball, about the size of a ping pong ball. I'm going to squeeze it fairly hard and I'm going to put it in right down the mark. There's not a lot of bait in there, there's probably about eight or nine casters in that ball, three or four pinkies. And I don't really want to be feeding a lot because I don't want a lot of fish in my peg. I'd much rather there only be a couple of big skimmers in my peg than a load because you're going to get false indications and foul up them. For the roach it's a completely different kettle of fish because they're more aggressive feeders. But for the skimmers, I'm quite happy with there not being many fish in my peg and just picking odd ones off. Especially on a hard day like today. So that little ball should hopefully just bring a few fish into the peg. We should be able to steer a few in 20 minutes when we want to rest the roach line. So now we've topped up that long line, we're going to have a drop on the short line. This rig is completely different. It's a 4x10s Chianti style float and we've got strung out number 11s across the bottom third of the rig 
the idea being we can still get the bait down pretty quickly if we need to but at the same time if we want to hold on to it we can properly let that pinky fall slowly and as naturally as possible so we've just laid him in in a big long line right on top of them three balls that we put in earlier and obviously we have been loose feeding a little bit as well so we want them fish to be following that bait down to the bottom and we're looking for some pretty quick bites I'm imagining that the fish here are going to be smaller so we need to catch them quickly to make it worthwhile well there we go that didn't take too long at all I think it's a little perch but that's absolutely fine it's a fish in the net swinging yep probably about an ounce and a half but that's fine on this short line because we can catch them twice as quick as the long line I'd be happy with one of them if we put in we'll catch a couple of pound in an hour just on a single Flare open he was on a size 20 green gamma hook. The same look as what we used in the last video, 2075 fluorocarbon. And then the main line for the rig is 010. I normally do like an 013 main line, but because I want my float to follow all my shot, I find a finer main line just allows everything to be a bit more natural. And the river. It's like a little ropes this one. Yep. Little roach, but like we said, that's absolutely fine on this short line. We can catch them quickly. I mean, if we can catch fish a minute for five minutes and catch half a pound, that that's the equivalent of catching an eight-ounce skimmer on the long line in five minutes. So we're going to keep working at this and just keep throwing a few pinkies over the top. I'm not going to feed any ground bait yet because we've not had issues with fish coming up off the bottom. And I do find that loose feeding can attract more fish into the peg, which is certainly what we want on this line. So we're going to crack on with this, see if we can put a few fish in the net. Nice rope, that one, about two ounce. We started to get a few fish on this short line now. Just keep throwing a couple of casters over the top every every drop. We seem to be getting a few fish competing, which is what we need on this line to make it worthwhile. It's been better to lay the rig in with the toe, so it falls a little bit slower than if you've laid it in against the toe. It seems to have brought us a few bites. I feel like they're watching it down, and as soon as it gets to the bottom, they're nailing it. So far, the best duck bait has been a single pinky. I've tried double pinky and a maggot and a caster but doesn't seem as good. Rotating lines like this really can make a difference on a hard day. It just gives the fish a little bit of time to have a rest. I mean that long line now has been resting for about 10 minutes so that just gives the fish time to build up a little bit of confidence and start to feed again and hopefully when we drop on that line there'll be a few there waiting for us. Oh he's on, oh, another little one. The fish are starting to get smaller on this line now. I mean, that's definitely below an ounce, that one. So, I'm going to give it a couple more drops, and if the stamp doesn't increase, I'm going to top up with some ground bait and get back on that long line. So, it's definitely time to top up the short line and get back on the long line. So, I'm going to get this roach in. I'm going to get my cupping kit out I'm going to put a little ball on that short line and I'm going to put quite a bit of bait in it I mean a good 20-25 casters and quite a few pinkies and that's just because I want a lot of fish in my peg so I need some bait there to hold them there it's not like the skimmer line where I'm looking to catch three or four fish every time I drop on it to make this short line viable I need to be catching quite a few fish on it I'm going to put that ball in now, it's probably the size of two ping pong balls, right down the mark. It's, the ground bait is quite wet, which I think is very important to make sure that everything gets down to the bottom and binds nicely. And we're going to get back out on the long line. That's a bite. Doesn't seem like a bad fish. Just need to try and navigate him around all the weed. Sit back nice and smoothly. We'll do it. Go one of them hand sized skimmers, we'll swing in. I think I'm going to have this as my last drop on this long line now. It's only been worth three or four fish this time round, but it's given that short line 
some vital time to have a little rest so some fish can build up. Just latched into another one now. Another one of them skimmers. Getting round the weed and back. So a better fish, but we'll swing in there. So yeah, it's going to be dark in about 25, 30 minutes. So I reckon a, a quick finish on that on that short line, and then we'll see what we've caught. So we're going to finish the session on this short line that we've been loose feeding all afternoon. We dropped on it midway through and caught a few fish, but then we've left it alone for 20 minutes. We're going to see if there's a few fish there. Oh, quite straight away. Little roach, I think. Lovely, he's probably about an ounce. So if we can catch ten of them to finish, that'll there or thereabouts put another pound in the net if a couple are a little bit bigger. We might finish with about four pounds, which would be nice for what we've had. We've had 90 minutes max I'd say by the time I'd done faffing about setting up. Another one. Little roach. Slightly better one he is. He might be two ounce. He's got a fat belly on him. We're really starting to struggle for light now. Most of the street lights are on. So I'm going to get packed up in a minute so we can have a look at what we've caught. A little roach on this short line. I reckon two more fish and I'll be happy. That's going to be his target. Two more. Another roach on this short line. So this will mean that I need one more fish. If I get him in, might even be a skimmer. Is it? It's a nice roach, about three ounce. So yep, one more fish, and we can pack away. Oh, what's this? into something a little bit better on this short line. There is a massive clump of weed there, so I need to be really careful. Try and get him up. He might be over it. It'll take me time. Whatever it is, it's a nice fish to end on. I don't know what this could be. It's fighting really weirdly. Oh, it's a proper skimmer. What a lovely fish to end the day on. And he's in the net. Get in. Whew. What an amazing fish to end the day on. Let's have a look what we've caught. Well, here we have it. We've caught about five or six pounds in less than two hours this afternoon and I've really enjoyed it. It just shows that even when it's freezing like this, just topping up and rotating lines can keep the bites coming. We've caught plenty of these hand-sized skimmers on the long line, about 30 or 40 of these roach on the short line and then we've finished with this absolute beauty also on the short line. And it just goes to show that even though you want to catch big fish on your long line and small fish on your short line, anything can happen, and as long as your tackle's balanced, you'll get everything in. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, and you can do that by clicking here. See you later.